Welcome to La Taverna Friuli Wines, the definitive podcast on wines from Friuli Venezia Giulia. I'm your host, Wayne Young. Hey, here we are. Finalmente. Ciao, Matea. Ciao, Ricardo. Eleanor. We are here on La Taverna. First recorded podcast here on Clubhouse. I'm really excited. Um, and I'm also here with uh, some friends and some co-hosts, a little bit of wine on the table. I'm going to try and get a picture up of Moreno's wine, but um, I am totally psyched. Um, this is something that I've been trying to do for a long time. I appreciate everybody here who's uh, coming to join and saying hello um, and to listen in. Um, yeah, this is something that I've been dreaming about doing for a long time. And when uh, Clubhouse started, uh, my idea was to sort of bring this into a, a bigger realm. So we are recording tonight. Um, we're doing this in English. Um, and I, without further ado, I would like to, um, to introduce my friends who are here tonight to help me out. Uh, first, our guest of honor is uh, Moreno Ferlat, who is a producer in Isonzo. Um, I am proud to say that when I first met Moreno about 16 years ago, I think he was 12 years old at that point. <laughs> um, yeah. um, and, and I tasted his wines, and, I, and, and you remember this, and I tell you this all the time. I was like, Moreno, you're going to become famous. You're going to be a famous winemaker. And, and he's moving in that direction, and, and things are moving and changing, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But um, I'm also really happy to hear, happy to have here with me um, my lovely friend Natalie Benlolo as my co-host. Um, once you hear her speak, you will understand why I brought her here. Um, so yeah, um, Luciano and Ricardo, you are here. Feel free to jump in and um, and ask questions. Uh, I'm going to invite everybody up on the stage. I always do my things like super, um, super relaxed and super casual. So please just raise your hand, jump up and, uh, you know, ask a question of, uh, of Moreno when we get going. So Moreno, Natalie, welcome. Thank you very much for being here. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hi, Nat. Hi, Wayne. <laughs> Hi, Moreno. So um, before we start talking about wine, now, why don't you tell us a little bit about you? <laughs> I've been in Friuli for uh, 17 years, and I came here via a musician. People know Robert Miles. Unfortunately, we lost him, but I've been here for 17 years. I'm just being instructed <laughs> on how to use the microphone. Yes. It's, it's everybody's first time tonight, so here in the studio. And um, I like wine, and I like being with my friends, and I find myself at long last working in the wine tourism industry, where I've been collaborating with a um, company called Vino di La, and um, I'm here to learn. Wayne is teaching me. <laughs> well, you know, I, I brought you here because um, not only do you have a unique perspective on, on wine because you're not a sommelier or a winemaker, I, I, I also really appreciate your palate and your enthusiasm for wine. So that's why I have you here, not just because you have a hot and sexy voice. So <laughs> thank you, Wayne. <laughs> But anyway, um, so moving on to the wine stuff here, um, Moreno, thanks for coming tonight. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your winery? How, how no, no, in all seriousness, how old are you? Um, yesterday, 39. 39. Yeah. Really? That yeah, old? Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday? Yes. Oh, 902. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, right. uh, hi, everybody. Yeah, first time. Thank you for calling me. Uh, here to talk about me and my wines. My pleasure. Um, yeah, we has a long way that I know you, and uh, I'm really happy about that because uh, you open my mind sometimes about uh, what the world uh, looking about wines. And obviously, when I start, I'm just selling wines in Friuli and Italy. So talking to you or have a 
testing with you was uh, uh, was something that uh, changed a little bit my mind and changed the idea of the wines that I make. Uh, um, because obviously the wines changing with the person that make the wines. So if the winemaker grown, the wines grown and changing. So I change my character. I change my life uh, a few times. So I, I change my wines also in the same way. Um, the seller, uh, if you're talking about my seller, starting with my grandpa uh, uh, in the fifties. Um, but was a classic uh, Friuli uh, agriculture, um, uh, I don't know, company, I don't know what the word is correct. Uh, so we have uh, animals, we have, um, uh, we have um, crops and we have wines, uh, vine, vines. Uh, after in the 90s we change into and pushing just to move uh, only to produce wine and we make a jug wine in the first uh, round and in the 20s we change again we move to organic vine organic uh, agriculture and uh, um, starting to bottle the wines uh, now the seller has uh, um, seven hectares and a half. We make around 30,000, 32,000 bottles a year. Uh, in the 2007 uh, is coming to enjoy us, uh, me and my dad, also a Federica Tabacchi, that she's coming like a, a corner of the cellar. And she, she was before a, a girl that sell us sell our wines uh, in Friuli and after she just come into uh, inside because she loved the, the idea and she loved the work. So she coming in uh, four, five years ago already. Wow. Uh, yeah, so for 2017. So, yeah. Okay. And we grown a lot with her. So I'm really happy to, to have her in, on board. Yeah. yeah. Is, is she an enologist or? No, she study completely something different because she study low. But um, she's starting to work in a um, selling business. So she's starting to do uh, like, uh, I don't know the word in English, but you go around to selling product, high yeah. quality product, like a uh, sell person. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, olive oil or um, other delicacy from uh, uh, different regions. And uh, we make for, uh, for her one white and one red. So it's the land vineyards uh, whites is two blends that we make it from 2014 it just made for uh, for her uh and after 2017 she coming in okay so yeah. when when did you actually start making one you obviously have a, a degree in enology i have enology. a i i have a high school in enologist six years in cividale okay because uh, an enologist in the past was six years not five um, and after I have a graduation in enology for three years in uh, Udine University. Oh, okay. So near here because it's just in the corner of here. Yeah. And, uh, right around the corner. Yes. And uh, after I have some experience around because I go in South Africa, I go in Sicily, I go in Tuscany to work. Um, I come back in Friuli and I, uh, I have the great uh, lucky to work in a massive cellar very famous and historical important seller in Friuli mm -hmm. uh, that was Livio Feluga. Right. I was a chief of the seller for uh, 10 years, nine years. And then in 2017, I just uh, leave the work in Livio Feluga to work with only uh, for the, my seller. Oh yeah, I remember when you worked for yeah. Livio Feluga, so. Yeah. Yeah, I remember That's that. This is my story. That is your story, so. Um, and so did you sort of grow up around wine? Was your, your dad was running the, the, the winery yeah, before uh, you? Yeah, it was before my granddad and after my dad. But I started to just have a collaboration. I was 16. So it's a, a lot. <laughs> and I didn't have a thinking. I was like 23 years old now. Huh? 20 years. Three, yeah. yeah. 23, wow, 23 years. Uh, the first vintage uh, that I make by myself, just helping with my dad was when I was 20. Okay. Uh, before we just talking together and we, we do the jobs together. But okay. when I was 20, I just decided to do a wine uh, in my way. Okay. And uh, I was lucky because my dad just gave me white paper to okay. write my, my story wow. and the wine. Obviously, we have some... Uh, I don't know what I can say. Some crushing. 
together. Oh, okay. I don't know if it's an English uh, <laughs> explanation, <laughs> but we have just some fights. Yeah. yeah some crashing together. I understand. Yeah. Um, but uh, we still uh, have a collaboration, so... <laughs> <laughs> I don't kill you, him, <laughs> he, he don't kill me, so okay. uh, we're still, still working together. Still working together. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. And, and no, you've never gotten to a fist fight, no one's ever. No. Close. A lot of, a lot of shouting. Okay. <laughs> a lot of big shouting. But you know, in Friuli, uh, it's just so easy. Old people, old people, uh, Friulano style is uh, talking really loud and yeah. uh, with some bad words. But <laughs> after... Two hours, we, we come back to uh, to a normal life. All, all the words when I learned yes. when I first yeah, came here. Yeah, yeah. First, first two days. <laughs> yes. yeah. So, and um, so we're we're actually drinking one of your wines right now. Um, it's the the Pinot Grigio, and it's a it's a Ramato style. Yeah, this is. Would a, you call this Ramato, or this is almost more of a rosé? Uh, yeah, we we uh, we call it the PG Rosa. Okay. As a, it's coming out like a Bianco in reality. It's okay. coming out like with the white one because there's no DOC. Uh, we're coming out from the DOC in 2018 because uh, we don't pass the, 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 the testing of the DOC. So, and we was in Vinitaly, so with the importers in front of us. Uh, we are a little bit scared because, uh, you know, a Pinot Grigio for us is uh, now the first wine that we're selling. And uh, change the name uh, in, uh, in a period like that for us, a really grown, uh, grown up seller uh, was for me crazy. Okay. Uh, but we have no other option because if I, you, you are cut off of the DOC, you can, you can call Pinot Grigio now. Um, oh, okay. in Friuli and in uh, Trentino and in Veneto. Uh, so you have to change to EGT and invent your name. So for us, we always call PG because Pinot Grigio is PG for us. Okay. And Rosa was because uh, they tell that uh, our wine was too colored for us to Pino, for be a Pinot Grigio. So we just decide to say, okay, it's too, too colored. We call it with the color. So you think you, it's too uh, pink, Rosa. We just go to call it Rosa. So okay. we changed the name. Um, yeah, it's an um, orange wine or Ramato style wine for Pinot Grigio because the Pinot Grigio is no white skin. It has a um, copper pink, uh, light red uh, color. So if you uh, make a skin contact with the, uh, or maturation with the, with the skins, you just take out the color. Did you know that, Natalie? No, I'm learning a lot. See that? Yeah. I didn't know any of this. Well, th that's, that's why you're here. I'm here. Are you amazed that Pinot Grigio is not a white grape? I am. <laughs> I'm also interested in the, the doc and the I. Indicazione okay. Geografica Tifica. Okay, IGT. What's yeah. the difference? Uh, DOC is just uh, an appellation like AOC in France. I don't know if it's in California one. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a uh, approved viticultural area. Avia, yeah. AVA. Okay. So uh, there is like a. Um, a pyramid of uh, appellations, uh, DOCG, the top one. There is DOC. After there is a EGT, so indication of geographic, uh, indication of geographic atypica, so a typical geographic indication. And uh, after you have a uh, normal wine. Okay. Table wine. So yeah. they are just a little bit over, but not for our. Uh, well, no, because we want, just because we present the wine in DLC, the 2007-18, and they just say, uh, no, it's too correct for us a Pinot Grigio, to be a Pinot Grigio, so you just to have to, de to declassa. It's called okay, it. declassify. The class yeah. yeah, the classification, and so we go to EGT. The problem is, in the EGT, you can't uh, use the name of Pinot Grigio. You have to use a fantasy name okay. so we for that the story about the pinot I, grigio I did not know that that was the law now that now if you make pinot grigio that's not white it falls out of the the doc no it's not because that because they they just put inside that uh, the color has be copper okay. but this color is too it's too red yes okay so uh, they don't consider it uh, don't consider it yeah Ramato, they consider yes it Oh, okay. So we just uh, decide to go down, and after we never go back to DOC. Okay. Now it's more acceptable because there was massive pushing to have a copper and or 
rose style of Pinot Grigio and the DOC of uh, Colli Orientali just put inside the Ramato mansion. Oh, okay. But uh, we are in Isonzo and also now we have our name. We're pushing our name. We're pushing Ferlato. We're pushing PG Rosa and okay. we just uh, stay in the same way. We don't want to go back. I think you're the first person I've had on the podcast, on the show, that's been from Isonzo. Okay. Um, we've always talked about Colio. We've always talked about Colio Orientale. We've talked a little bit about Ponca. We've talked about... Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about Isonzo and, and where it is in Friuli and what's different about Isonzo that's different from, say, Colio? Okay. Uh, Isonzo is starting from Cormons. That is the, just the top part of Isonzo. And go down in the, all the rivers of Isonzo, go down till uh, um, uh, Pieris, uh, Monfalcone, that, that old area. Of ah, there. it goes all the way down to Monfalcone. Yes. So almost to so, the sea. Yeah, uh, just before okay. to arrive at the sea. After okay. it's coming to uh, Aquileia and you have Grado and everything, so other areas. Okay. Uh, but the, the, the difference is uh, uh, there is divide uh, two parts. is uh, Rive di Giare and Rive Alte. So it's like, uh, it's a classification. Is um, Rive di Giare is uh, like uh, uh, the, 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 the side of the river where there's more stony. And the other one, Rive Alte, is the top of the area. Uh, we are in Rive Alte. Um, and uh, the soil is stony with uh, stone from the river, but is mixed up with the clay, uh, red clay also, and uh, some ponca. Because obviously oh. we have the hills, uh, the, the soil from the hills go on the bottom, obviously. And we okay, are just so it on the bottom. erodes down yeah. and into, okay. So there is no real class, real division about uh, Isonza Collio in the top area where we are. Uh, so in reality, our is a really melting pot of uh, soils where we have the cellar and where we have the vineyard. So we have a stone from the rivers. And also in Cormons, there is another river that is uh, Udrio. Uh, they divide uh, the province of Udine and, Cormon and Gorizia, and there is other stones. So you have uh, Isonzo uh, Udrio with the stony, uh, but you have the the clay, red clay, and also a little bit of punka, so, so um, sand and uh, white or brown. Uh, so what's so. the effect on the, the actual uh, wine? The, flesh, the, the flat in, a, in, a, in this area is that we have um, a great wines with a potential um, like a colio, but a little bit uh, more lighter and more fresh. Okay. So I think we are just a good balance about the powerful and the very strong um, identity of the Collio and uh, the um, gravy or the stony soils that are more uh, light uh, wines. So we are just in the middle and I think we can have the, both characteristics. Yeah, and there, I mean, there are a lot of great wines from Isonzo. Yeah, there is uh, some iconic vineyards from um, uh, sellers for me in this area. So um, uh, if I think uh, Via di Romance yeah. for me is just one that I think all the time. Doesn't doesn't Yerman have? Uh, Yerman has a Villa Nova well. as a part. Uh, yeah. His own parts in uh, in Collio. There is um, Masuda Rive. There is uh, Luisa. So there is a lot of uh, big sellers uh, and uh, very important sellers. There is. Um, uh, Oh, I, 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 it's coming in my mind the surname <laughs> because I know him very well, but oh, I know okay. that the name of the. Uh, I understand uh, you're nervous. It's okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, um, so, um, yeah, in Isonzo, I think it has a reputation more for great producers rather than a, a great area. You yeah, know, I think uh, people know Via di Romans, people know Yerma, but they don't really know Isonzo. Yeah, this is a big problem for us. I yeah, think. What, Definitely. How, how can we change that? Uh, I don't think we can change just because the, um, uh, the, our uh, DOC consortium doesn't work, it doesn't exist. Okay. So call you as a consortium, as a, um, I don't know if consortium is a word. Consortium, in yeah. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. perfect. Um, no, we don't have because it's fail like. Uh, 10 years ago, and we never starting to do. Uh, and so everyone moved to like a single seller. So everyone okay. pushing his name. 
Okay, uh, rather than pushing the area. Yes. Okay. Yes. Also, for me, it's a bit different because I have. A, for me, it's crazy because I have the cellar in Collio. The just the cellar is in Collio area, uh, but all the vineyards are in Isonzo. So because I'm a historical cellar, I can do my wines in Collio. Because in theory, I can do my wines. I have to have a cellar in Isonzo to make the wines in Collio. Ah, okay. You know, something strange. Uh, but a lot of cellar have a double part. So also in Collio, there is a lot of cellar that have soil in Isonzo. Okay. So it's a really mix up in Cormons because there is just half in Collio and half in Isonzo. Okay. Ah, so, literally, the, the Comune yeah. of Cormons yes, is half definitely, in Collio. Definitely. Ah, I didn't the, know that. The, the, the road that moving to the center of Cormons, uh, go to Gorizia and after go to Cividale, the Statale, okay. just divide Collio from Isonzo. Okay. So... So you one side is the hill and yes. one side is Isonzo. Yes. Okay. That's wow. It. I didn't I didn't know that they were that close yeah. Yeah, together. Yeah. So, you know, um, if you have a Collio uh, and also Isonzo, you're pushing Collio, it's just so easy. Um, and so there is not a lot of cell that have just Isonzo. Mm. Yeah. It can be a problem. I'm drinking your wine and I, I love it. It's really fruity. Um, lots of like strawberry and cherry and things like that, which I really think is really beautiful and not your typical flavors that you get out of a Pinot Grigio. So yeah, I'm really, uh, I'm really, I'm really digging this wine. Before I ask any more questions, I wanted, I have Luciana and Ricardo up on the stage. I wanted to make sure that, that you guys didn't want to ask a question. Please jump in. Like I said, it's totally casual. Jump in and, and ask a question for us or for, or especially for, uh, for uh, Moreno. Did you have any questions? Um, Natalie, you seem confused. Oh, I'm no, I'm I'm taking it all in. I'm listening and and learning, I'm listening and learning with the microphone again. Um, yeah, just tasting the wine myself. What do you What do you think of the wine? Delicious. I love it. I don't want to say sweet. It's the wrong word. Maybe fruity is the word I want. Yeah, really this, mature fruit, right? I spoke to an American today who. Loves Friulano wine. He has a tour operator, and he was talking about how much he prefers the wine, the Friulano white wines. And he's gone off the really dry, dry wines. Mm. And I think it's what a lot of people who don't know, the, like talking of white wine, for example, from here, which is what it's famous for. Right. They don't. They think it's sweet. And they maybe think what's, they think what's they think sweet. that white that what the white wines from here they often are described to me as oh it's a bit sweet because okay. we're so used to drinking really dry whites in England ah uh, okay and less fruity maybe all right yeah yeah that makes sense a lot of Chablis and Muscadet and things like that yeah but even I mean may I ask an ignorant question you can ask any question there's no such thing as an ignorant question so would for example something like a suave be considered be considered a dry wine it's dry yeah less fruity usually yeah. right yeah it's more stony flavors and yeah. so in more the, mineral in the uk yeah. we know suave it's one of the the wines that people will pick off the shelf a you know nice italian simple wine sort of thing although english people are more into um french wines oh uh, yeah we're working to change that. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's where you come in. You got to help us take care of that. Absolutely. Okay. Um, what have been some of the particular challenges you've had running the winery, Moreno? What have uh, been some of your toughest hurdles? Uh, um, uh, normally, Friuli is um, really famous for uh, white wines. We just okay. listen now. Um, uh, uh, but my, uh, my best, um, can I say, um, my first thing was, uh, because I love, you know, I love, uh, Cabernet Franc. Okay. And I test a lot of Cabernet Francs. Uh, you know that, so. Yep. Um, I've I, been to a couple of those tastings. Yeah. Thank you. So, so I, I, I think that my other thing is understand, take, take, try to understand, to make understand the people that we can do great red wines in this area. Okay. For me, obviously, my focus is on Cabernet Franc, but I can talk about Schiopettino or uh, Refosco uh, uh, in the same uh, thing. So the people don't understand that uh, in this area, because it's famous for white, you can have all also a red, great red wines. If you're working, obviously, really well, 
and if you started to thinking to make red wines mm. and no white wines mm. i think uh, the problem in friuli is sometimes the people that make great white wines don't change the mind to make great red wines okay this is for me as a big problem here and was my first idea to make uh, I hope a great red wine. Well, I've had your Cabernet Franc, both the the regular label and the the Sessanta. Sessanta. Yeah, and they're by far for me the best Cabernet Francs in free. Evening. I'm really happy about that. No, and, no, uh, I absolutely. <laughs> and I'm not the only one who thinks that. You know, we no, have friends no, who I, buy yeah. your wines in Austria and things like yeah, that, so they no, agree. No, no. So, so uh, if you're looking for great Cabernet Franc from Friuli, seek out Moreno Farlat's wines. So. Yeah. Uh, so for me, that one was the the big. Uh, the so big your big. focus is more on red wines than on white wines. No, white wines is obviously All, what also I do, but okay. uh, um, I want to demonstrate someone that in this area, if you're working well, you can do great red wines. Is is Sonzo particularly suited to red wines? Um, I, more than some Secolio? areas, some, some areas area. of Isonzo, there is red stone, red uh, clay, red stones make great red wines for me. So Cabernet Franc in this area can be amazing for me in Isonzo. In the um, when you have red, uh, red um, and uh, Ferretti we call it, red uh, soil with uh, iron inside, yeah, and uh, stony because they go a little bit lighter. Okay, uh, so the, the the water drain down. Uh, for me, it's just the uh, maximum soil for make um, a great red. And what's the effect of the, the red soil, the iron on the, the, on the, the grapes? They make, uh, there is um, the, 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 the ferretti, the, the, the soil that have red mm, color. red color, make uh, have a, a lot of nutrients, a lot of um, uh, uh, micronutrients for the grapes. Okay. But the problem normally for the reds is uh, to go in Friuli to go really long uh, in the maturation. So you have to go in October or uh, start of October, middle of October, end of October for pick up great grapes. Okay. For Cabernet Franc, I'm talking because it's my focus. So you have to have stones because you have to go to drain and not have uh, a lot of uh, rain stay in a, in a soil. Okay. Uh, because obviously normally in the end of September, 1st of October, starting to come in rain here. Yeah. So you have to have, uh, uh, have a correct uh, um, leaf uh, and um, bunches um, uh, disposition. So have the grapes free to have air okay. and don't go mold. Okay. And also the soil you have to drain a lot because you have to take out the water. If not, the, the plants just pumping up water because they have a lot. The berries explode, exploding. Literally burst. Yeah, burn. Wow. And after you have a problem with the uh, uh, mufa, so with the uh, uh, mold. Is, is, is Cabernet Franc particularly um, susceptible to that type uh, of problem? No, but uh, you have to think in that you have to go over. Okay. So you have to go longer with the maturation. This is the problem. So yeah. the the great the, the plant the, the the vines have to be stay longer out with the grapes on. So okay. it's not a problem about uh, just have this problem, but have uh, for a long time. So you have to just uh, looking for a long time to okay. have a great uh, um, seed maturation. Okay. Inside. Yeah, because very often here in Friuli, Cabernet Franc is very, very green. Yeah, that's the problem. If you pick up too early, you have uh, the seeds are really green and they give you a green flavor. Okay. If you try to go over, you can have this uh, r like maturation better, better maturation. So you can have uh, uh, less green flavors and more move to other flavors of Cabernet Franc. That is that what we want. Okay. Can I ask we... you a question? Does green flavor make it herbaceous? Yeah, yes. that is the idea. I see. I don't want... They if... love that here. I think I remember when our friend here had a studio in a different place, there was the Petrusa wine, if I remember. Is that... And it was a it red, very, very herbaceous red wine. And I find a lot of the red wines that I drink here are like that. So are you suggesting that if you leave it longer on the vine, it, the grape's obviously sweeter? It's not really about the sweeter, it's more the changing of the flavors, the changing of the aromas. 
So the green aromas normally, uh, in Cabernet Franc are normal, but uh, if you go over with the maturation, they're just changing a little bit. So you don't have the geranius flavor, the greeny or the um, cutting herb flavor. Mm -hmm. You move to tobacco, you move to chocolate, you move to um, bean of coffee. Um, so that is a little bit mocha flavor, just for understand. Mm. So for me, it is that the direction for make uh, Cabernet Franc because uh, the best Cabernet Franc in the world have these flavors. Uh, obviously, the green flavor can be nice, and uh, if it's just in the middle, like a minty flavor, like uh, some hint of um, pepperoni go inside, can be nice because they just give a round flavor, so not just one or two. Um, uh, notes but if you have more it's better obviously but no only one straight green flavor that I, I don't want I don't like and we try to don't have in our wines yeah I, I've told you guys the story about the guys who came into the cellar when I was working in the cellar and they said ah we want to find like some real Cabernet and so we tasted them on some tanks he wanted to buy like a demijohn or something uh, or 10 liters or something and so brought them to the best tank of Cabernet that we had in the cellar. And they were like, no, 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 this isn't the real Cabernet. We want the real Cabernet. So we brought them around to all the different tanks and they didn't like any of them. And then we took them over to these like six demijohns on a pallet that we put in the corner because it was terrible. It tasted like the green bean water from a can of, of green beans. Like literally, if you open a can of green beans and you drank it, that's what this Cabernet. And they were like, yeah, that's the one we want. That's the Cabernet we're looking for. And, and yeah, people in Friuli have this idea that Cabernet has to be really weedy and green. Yeah, yeah, I, I think because historically they make that. Yeah. So the, the 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 quantity of the grapes in the plant in the in the vines are massive. Because it was a wine to drink, uh, the alcohol was uh, low, so a lot of grapes, uh, no a lot of alcohol, no maturation, no really, uh, the, the seed don't go in the right direction. So you okay. just have uh, a green flavors and for ages they just drink and still drink that. Okay. Uh, we still make a part of that. For a damigiana, we make a little bit of damigiana as like a jug wine still okay. making. And we just harvest a little bit early. Oh, There's okay. no way. Yeah. <laughs> they want it. So that's the style that they're looking for. So that's yeah. what you give them. Yeah. 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 Give a, the people what little, they want. A little bit, but we we still have. Okay. Uh, because we still have a little bit of uh, jug wines. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I just wanted to um, sort of reset the room here because we do have some new people coming in. Um, please do raise your hand and come up onto the stage if you want to ask any questions of Moreno. Um, if Luciano or Ricardo have anything to say, you guys are already up on the stage, so you just have to unmute your mic and start talking. So, But please, anybody who wants to come up, I hate to dominate the, the, the conversation. Um, I love to hear from you guys, so please you know, feel free to come on up and, and, um, and ask. Oh, Ricardo, did you want to... a question? Yeah, Luciana. <laughs> Please go right ahead. Really good to see I you have here. Like thanks two for coming. Questions. Uh, so nice to see you guys. Thank you for inviting me. No, thanks, um, Luciana. I love Vinson. So, so for me, it's a rare opportunity to learn more about it. It's quite difficult to find information, <laughs> not to mention the, the wine itself. Um, I really, really love the Merlot and Cabernet Franc I tasted from Insonso. Um, and people say I'm crazy because they say, ah, oh, you should love the white ones. Yes, I like the white ones. Yes, I do. I love them. But I'm really impressed about the Merlot and Cabernet Franc. And I was listening to you guys talking about the iron on the red sand soil. And it came to my mind, Chile. And every time people talk about iron and in, in in the terroir and all the effects on the red grapes, it came to my mind the green pepper uh, kind of flavor in the wines, and I don't find um, pleasant the green pepper and the wine, and then and I didn't find in Sonso. So um, I would like to hear more about that because I'm fascinated, I'm fascinated about the red ones. Well, we'll definitely talk more about red Moreno. I mean, do you 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 do Cabernet Franc? Do yeah. you do other red wines as well? Uh, I do a Merlot. Also. You do a Merlot. Yeah, we don't have. There's any... a fantastic Merlot. I tasted. You I tasted Moreno's it. Merlot. 
Yes. Oh, yes, that's awesome. Okay. And, nice. And it's fantastic. <laughs> and I'm really surprised about uh, oh. it, when he talked about the iron and the red sand soil. So, um, so since I don't I know a lot about a, Chile, Luciana, so you're saying that there's a, a similarity between, have you worked in Chile, Moreno? Oh, South Africa. South sorry. Africa. Oh, okay. <laughs> I gave it a shot. Yeah, because in Chile, in Chile, they say the Cabernet Franc in Chile and the Carmenere. Yeah. Are really good over there because um, the iron and soil, and they don't have some kind of disease because of that. And you guys were talking about um, how to manage um, the vineyard. Um, so I want to hear more uh, about not having the green pepper and the Cabernet Franc and. The Merlot are really nice. Thank you for doing that. Oh. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Well, if you if you tried the Merlot, wait till you try the the Cabernet because the Cabernet is really, especially if you can find some of the Sassanta. But it's not not much of that around, unfortunately. No, it's, uh, if you think no, it's that, quite difficult. Yeah, Sassanta is uh, we make around uh, six hundred bottles a year, so it's really low quantity. And there's a selection of a little vineyard. Okay. It's like uh, really. Slow, really uh, small quantity. So what is what are yeah? So Luciana. So we were talking about you know the the soil and is the is it? Uh, I forgot whether you were saying is it warmer in uh, Isonzo as yeah, well? Yeah, it's a little bit. It's not warmer because you don't have a really st uh, like south uh, that you have explosion. in Colio explosion, but okay. the explosion. But uh, you have the the stones that drain a lot of the water, so you don't have water on the bottom, so they just uh, dry a little bit. And the white stones just give a, a reflection oh, okay. of... Uh, so kind of like Chateau Neuf de Pop style. Yeah. So this hot stones a, yes. that heat the vineyards at yes, night. Yes, definitely. Oh, okay. So less temperature um, uh, differences from night to day yeah. in Isonzo. Yes, definitely. Okay, definitely. so that must help the ripeness as well. Yes, definitely, yes. Cool. And also the difference, I think, uh, uh, is the... Um, um, using in the vineyards about uh, the pruning of the not pruning maybe the cutting the leaves or cutting the the bunches that they grown okay uh, because we try to don't cut if it's possible so just leave grown and just have one chimatura uh, i don't know in english the oh, word. where you trim so, the, the, the trim tops. The, yeah the tops yeah. just one time before to go to harvest okay uh, uh, no, only once wow. if it's possible yes so the idea is have an equilibrium about the the, the grapes and the plants the vines mm. because uh, uh, if you make a lot of feminella is the second um, bunches coming out when you trim okay uh, they just go and have a different equilibrium in the vines and they make more sugar and take out a little bit of acidity to the grapes so you have uh, more sugar less acidity and the wines are coming like bigger without have the body of a big soil or of a big area okay so it's coming loud for us a little bit out of it out of the balance Okay, so, so we you're... prefer don't trim, so we don't have this uh, explosion of second uh, secondary bunches, secondary um, secondary uh, growth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like a second flowering. Right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. We don't want that. You That's don't want the that. idea, and and uh, yeah, and give a lot of air to the grapes to have. Uh, yeah. Okay. So maybe take out some leaves. Uh, just have a. Um, like a green, a, a green harvest, we call it, if we need. So take out some grapes when they are not colored, so green. Okay. Just put, put redu reduction, have a reduction of production. And how so, much yeah. do you do per plant or per hectare? Whichever uh, but normally we go to, uh, for the reds, around 60, 50 to 60 uh, quintali hectare. Okay, so well. it's like 50 to 60 tons hectare. No, five to six tons an hectare. Right. Uh, that is the idea. For the whites, we go a little bit higher. Uh, for the eyes, we are around uh, eight tons an hectare normally. Okay. It depends, obviously, the variety. And Can I ask a question? Sure, go ahead. I'm curious about using barrels oaked. Does um, Cabernet always have to be oaked? Do you, do you oak the wines? Um, I use... Uh, for all the red wines that are in a bottle, we use oak, uh, 500 tonneau normally, 500 hectoliters or 600 hectoliters, sometimes uh, uh, barrels, 
but we use uh, just uh, all the barrels and all to know. Um, we just uh, clean very well. We just have a manager, uh, uh, correct manager managing of the barrels, but we use uh, barrels that have uh, from 10 to 20 years old. Wow. Okay. Um, barrels auto no. Um, because the, the, our idea for the barrel is not give uh, any flavor or less flavor as possible to the wine, but give more the oxygenation and the aging to the wine. So uh, we don't buy new wine, new barrels. We buy just a second hand. So we have like three, four, five years older already. And after we use it for a long time. Um, so I have, bar I have to know that I have 20 years without any problem. Uh, no, you can make also Cabernet Franc without a uh, barrel. It's not a problem about that. The difference is uh, f the what you want about that wine. So if you want a freshness, you go in stainless steel or concrete. If you want more aging and more evolution of the wine, it's better go for me in a, in a wood. But you can use also the new materials that are... It's coming in, 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 in analogies. You can use um, terracotta or you can use uh, uh, amphore or jugs or something like that. Big you don't jugs. use any of that stuff? No, I don't use. I don't really like it. Okay. I prefer stay in a wooden area. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, what about uh, terracotta though? I, am, I imagine terracotta to be something, you know, gives it the freshness maybe. And the no, it's contra the, just the opposite. Really? They give more because it's really... Uh, they have massive air inside, really poroso. I don't know what's that. Porous. Porous. porous yeah. I, was, I was trying, but I was not sure. So porous. So they have a lot of air coming in. So the wine is coming to aging quicker. Uh, okay. So I don't like that. I prefer just have a long time in food. I prefer that. Natural, I think is the word. <laughs> well, a lot, but, of, a lot of natural wines are done in amphora. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. different, but Those you know, natural with the quotes around. Yeah. yeah. So the, the the difference about the amphora for me, if you if I have to have an amphora, I want the amphora like in the right style for me is just on the ground. What's amphora? Amphora, amphora is, is the terracotta like, jug, jug, big jug, yeah, massive okay. jug. Thank you. Uh, the the idea for me, the amphora, then was they starting to use and they use in uh, in Georgia is uh, stay on the floor on the ground, just yeah, buried in the, in the ground, bar in the ground. Yeah. Grovner style. Yes, yeah. that is the idea. And because the, the idea of the amphora is uh, to just come back to the origin of the wines. Mm. If you have an amphora outside, you have to spend a lot of money for refrigerated the room. To so I don't I don't I don't understand why you tell me that you are natural and after use a, <laughs> a, a like a massive fridge to million dollar air conditioner. Yes. <laughs> so I I I have the ground that take the same temperature every day in a here. If I want a hand for I do that. Okay. Obviously, I don't want, so I don't care. Yeah. Uh, but I don't like the the the, the idea of an amphora outside and after have a condition area to to use it. So it's that that is not natural for me. Okay, Ricardo, did you have a question? I know you you started to speak, so Ricardo, jump in here if you wanted to uh, if you wanted to speak, Ricardo. Eccolo. Yes. Hello, <laughs> Ricardo. You don't Hello, like guys. you don't like Moreno's wines at all. I know. No, You're not a I big fan. really don't like. No, no, no. <laughs> I hate Moreno. <laughs> I think I know you. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just from uh, some, some year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just a question. Uh, what about... Uh, uh, the malolactic uh, in uh, in the red wines. Uh, good do question. You use, uh, why you use? Very good question. Because because usually uh, usually uh, a lot of times uh, I I I taste this uh, l l milky milky flavor in in red wines that uh, I, I really don't understand and don't like. So you are uh, 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 the right person to ask. Uh, okay. 
this uh, so white yeah, is. Uh, you get like a, a milky flavor from the wine. Yeah, sort of like uh, yesterday I tasted a, a Refosco di Faedis. The, the first smell was like butter. Milky? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bizarre. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so okay. yeah, malolactic. Malolactic Do you fermentation. Use and all that I sort of use, stuff? and normally I make in, not normally, I, in the last years I make naturally. So the um, malolactic fermentation is the secondary fermentation in the wine. And the changing uh, is made with bacteria. Um, and um, is just changing the malic acid, that is the acid of the um, uh, green apple, just for understand, to um, lactic acid, that is the, lat the, the acid of uh, yogurt, just for have a, an idea, green apple and yogurt, uh, natural yogurt. So um, I use it and I do naturally. Uh, normally is uh, go in the end of the skin contact in the reds. So skin contact, uh, finish the, the um, alcohol fermentation and start in the malolactic fermentation normally. Um, we use it uh, uh, because uh, uh, the difference about these two acidity, the two flavors is uh, really big. Uh, the green flavor, the, the, the malic acid is more uh, 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 aggressive. Uh, the um, lactic is more roundness, round in the mouth. So you feel like a bull in the mouth, you no, know, like something spiky. You know? So that is uh, good for the reds because the reds have the tannins. They are already aggressive in the mouth. So if you take out some acidity or oh, you have an acidity, but it's more uh, delicate. I think it's better. So we use it and we try to do that when a concrete vat before going in a barrel. But sometimes it doesn't happen and happen in the spring after um, when the, the, work, the temperatures go up, go up. So they just have a new restart of bacteria life and they restart to do a lot. Is that a problem that it starts later? Uh, yes, I try to have uh, the finish the malolactic before to go in barrel if it's possible okay. because obviously if you don't uh, do before and you go in barrel you can use the sulfur to protect a little bit the wine because the sulfur is just go against the malolactic bacteria okay. so if you don't have a malolactic uh, before going in a barrel you have to just uh, stay out of using the, C the um, SO2 for all the winter and can be a problem okay because can be a can have uh, some oxidation in the wine. It's a little so, risky. Yeah, more risky. Okay. It can be nothing, but can be a risk. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I live with this job uh, okay. and I'm not big. So, <laughs> lost the tank for me is important. Uh, not, yeah, it's, it's a big deal. Yeah. SO2 so. is sulfur, I so, assume. Yes. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> um, so, the malolactic, uh, uh, the problem about the milky flavor sometimes is not just the malolactic, but is the malolactic with the wood. Uh, because there is some uh, uh, flavors coming from the wood that is, was uh, just a, a, a transformation with the bacteria. And so they just more uh, like lattone. There is a, is a molecular that uh, have this flavor of uh, milk, uh, like Alpelibe flavor. I don't oh, know. Oh, okay. You can understand. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like caramel. Caramel, milky. Uh, and this is uh, what sweet Ricardo meat. doesn't I like. I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I try to just explain. It. So that is not just the malolactic. Obviously, some malolactic you have. Uh, if you do natural, you can have uh, obviously a lot of problems, like deviation of malolactic. You can have the smell of. Um, um, can I say the the the, the um, glows latex la yeah, yeah. Perfect. latex flavor is horrible I think yeah my idea. Yeah, not my favorite either yeah um, so there's a, a big risky do a natural one you can use the like a bacteria that you buy in a so you shop. inoculate for it yes like a normal uh, mm -hmm. like a bag like of a bacteria packet, yeah. yeah packet bacteria uh, we try to do for that natural just in a in a back of the fermentation, the alcoholic fermentation, just for easier and just uh, help us to have a finish the fermentation and go in barrel for okay. the rats. I'm talking about. All right. So the, the problem can be that uh, but obviously I don't know what wine uh, you tested and uh, what what yeah, what uh, what was the problem? Of yeah. 
So it's it's a particular problem to the malolactic in the barrel. Can be malolactic in the barrel. Okay. Yeah. That that milky yes. kind of flavor. Yeah. So we talked a lot about we're fifty five minutes in here. So um, you know, I always as always inviting people to to come up, Luciano, if you have any other questions, or Ricardo, jump right in. Eleanor, Michael, Kai, if you if you have any questions, please feel please feel free to jump up. Um, but we've talked a lot about your red wines. We haven't really talked at all about your white wines. Um, and I know that you're a big fan of Malvasia. Yeah. Uh, and I am too. Um, I have a funny feeling Malvasia is going to be the next big thing in Friuli. I hope so. But tell us a little bit about your, um, your, your Malvasias and maybe some of your other white wines as well. Yeah. The, the, the cellar that, um, that our cellar make, uh, 80%, 82% of white wines. We're talking a lot of red, oh, but okay. in reality, we I talk, make, yeah, we talk yeah, about hundred percent about red, yeah, but, no, but you make much matter. more white wine. Yeah, we make 80% of white wines. We make a lot of varieties because uh, the, uh, all the vineyards coming from my granddad. In the past, uh, you don't plant just two or three varieties in Friuli, but you planted, uh, you started to grow like 10 varieties because uh, it was the natural thing here, or natural stuff to do here uh, because there is varieties that is grown quickly, others longer. So you have a uh, work for like four, three months to harvest so it was just uh, easier to do everything and also because in the past you say if i can sell the pinot grigio maybe i can sell you the sauvignon if i don't sell you the sauvignon i sell you the friulano so i bring everything in uh, in my in my package and after i someone i selling you no way exactly. <laughs> there's no way you can't sell something yeah something yeah. has to make That's you happy. Idea. No. yeah yeah so we have a lot of varieties we make uh Actually, I think uh, with the selection, we make like nine wines in seven hectare and a half. Uh, so, but we have three uh, big wines with the numbers. There's Pinot Grigio, PG Rosa that we're testing today. Mm -hmm. We have a Sauvignon Blanc, uh, we have Friulano and Sauvignon Blanc. So we make like uh, 10,000 bottles of uh, Pinot Grigio around. Okay. Uh, like and you only make this style of Pinot Grigio. Yes. You don't make a white no, Pinot Grigio. No, okay. uh, we don't have any wine that is double. So we don't have uh, one uh, skin contact without, uh, one without. Okay. All the wines have a uh, minimum two days of skin contact, also the whites. Maximum, uh, we go for the whites is like uh, two weeks, 20 days. For the reds, we go from 30 to 40, 50, this depends. Okay. Uh, so after we have that, Friulano. Just a question. So, yep. Yes, Ricardo. Also, also Friulano you you make with the skin contacts yeah a day, day and a half two days normally two days. yes whoa yeah you don't feel it because normally is a start is the yes. um, just quick uh, fermentation because we use a pedicure for starting but as a, a quick a quick um, skin contact so we normally okay. uh, uh, just rack and divide the gra the grapes uh, the skins to the to the juice after one day uh, and half normally. Um, so we have um, normally uh, starting the fermentation so the skin go on the top of the tank. We do one punch down. The morning after, we just rack the juice, ski, um, uh, crush, the, crush the skins and uh, mix up together all for finish the fermentation. Okay. So yeah. Also the Sauvignon do an, a day of skin contact. Fermented skin contact. So starting the fermentation. Starting the fermentation. Because the, the idea is uh, use the starting the fermentation so they make the CO2, CO2 uh, grown up. So have a um, like inert uh, area mm -hmm. because the CO2 just um, uh, cover everything. So you don't have oxidation. So you can work the grapes and work the juice without any oxidation. So okay. the idea, the starting of fermentation is just that. Uh, have a little skin contact, have a, ox um, have a protection with the oxidation for the oxidation, and just uh, have um, a start in the fermentation after. So the idea is uh, that uh, to be quick as soon as possible and uh, um, don't have, uh, we call it tempo di latenza. I don't know, is it? Okay. Latency time, maybe, yeah. I don't know. From the crushing the berries mm -hmm. and the starting the fermentation. Okay. If this time is longer, you have a lot of oxidation or you have to use a lot of SO2, so sulfur for protect. Um, we try to don't use a lot of sulfur, so we try to have a 
small la- latin timing. yeah latency time yeah. sorry so basically you want to make that that the, that critical time before the fermentation where yes. you have this blanket as of co2 short, over the wine shorter. as short as possible yes okay you, do you inoculate or do you no, natural is, yeast? Normally we have a natural yeast with a pili So okay. Ah, okay. we start in a pili or a Pinot Grigio because normally it's the first variety that we just harvest. And then you use and that And after to... use that to inoculate everything. Okay. So it's just like a, like a cascata. Oh, it's, a, uh, it's like a waterfall. Yeah, waterfall. Yeah. So that or, one it, go to the other one, exactly. go to the other one, go to the other one. Okay. Yeah. Natalie's need, looking like, what the hell like are you talking about? There's some terminology that I need clearing. So, oh, so sorry. Pedicouvre is a French, is a, what is this? What is a pedicouvre? Uh, you just pick up some grapes before to harvest, the whole amount, and uh, start to a natural fermentation. So you just pick up the grapes, put in a tank, the stem if you want, if not, it's the same, crush it, uh, there is yeast, uh, yeast around the cellar and in the skins. They make the fermentation naturally. When the fermentation started, you just uh, have the normal harvest, so all the amount of the grapes that you want to harvest. You harvest, you use this juice that is starting already to ferment, put in the big uh, tank that you harvest, and uh, there is a, like a massive starter for the new fermentation. So instead of using like a packet of powdered yeast... This is like the equivalent of la uh, madre. Come si yeah. yeah, yes, exactly. It's yeah. like the, the, like the lievito it's, madre. It's lievito bacteria, madre. it's yeah. alive, lievito yeah. madre. Exactly. Yeah. So you start that first batch naturally and then you just and draw it from that. kicks off the next. Exactly. Okay. And then you just use a little bit from the next for the yes. next one. So it just so follows it, down. The, if the next tank uh, that I harvest is a Pinot Grigio again, I bring the first Pinot Grigio to buckets of Pinot Grigio, to um, buckets, yeah. Buckets, yeah. Uh, put inside. And that starts and the starting. Plant. If the next one is a Sauvignon, I don't make another Pinot Cuve. I just go with the Pinot Grigio in the mm-hmm. Sauvignon because two buckets in a massive quantity doesn't, doesn't change, change nothing. No, it doesn't That's change the idea. Anything. Okay. So it's like a Solera? I'm sorry, it's Luciana? It's like Solera? It's it, like a Solera? No, it's not like a Solera. It's like sort of a cascade. It's like literally like you take sort of when your new grapes come in, you're taking a, a bucket of the already fermenting grapes that you brought in, say, the day before and inoculating your new tank with that. So it's not a solera. It's not like you're using anything old. No. Um, you're just using that. And I I remember doing that in the cellar for um, malolactic. If the tank started So malo- only the fermentation process. Yeah, only the yeast like- for the fermentation. Yeah. Oh, okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah, so just, yeah, I remember taking buckets of, of one tank we wanted to have malolactic, but it wouldn't start. Yeah. And another one, it you had can, started. You can do the same for the bacteria. It doesn't exactly. change. It's just one go. Take a bucket one out, no. dump it in the other, yes. and malolactic starts. Oh, yes. got it. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay, so it's just kind of like that. It's, it's an inoculation. Christopher Walkie came up on stage. I invited him on. Christopher, did you have a question? Are you there? Maybe not. Oh, yes, there he is. Yes, Hi, Christopher. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Thanks for I coming, Christopher. All... No, no, thank you for inviting me. I, I think, if you don't mind, you're all punching above my weight here. I think I'd like to just listen and learn, if oh, that's okay, okay. I wanted to invite you up on stage if you wanted to say something, but by all means, uh, yeah, if you want to just listen and learn, that's fine. But we're more than an hour in into it, so um, I don't know. How I, what else can we talk about? I mean, I would like to ask you, like, what's next for you? I mean, you're a young winemaker. Not as young as I thought. I thought you were like 20 yeah. <laughs> No. Um, you're a young winemaker. You have a young family. Um, and uh, you're, you're, you have a partner who's also young. Um, so there's like the world is your oyster. Everything is ahead of you. So what are your, what are your dreams? What are your sogni nel cassetto for the future? Uh, for now, one of my dream is just uh, starting to make it because we made up the new cellar. Oh, okay. We just started. Uh, hey, is it finished? No, oh, we okay. have to finish. Just started building. Yeah, we have okay. to finish for the harvest. So we're pushing harder for that. So I'm really happy about that. So in the future, we have uh, a little new cellar for working well. Okay. So the idea is less stress for make the same things. That is amazing. That's always good. Yeah. Um, the next thing for us uh, is, uh, in reality, just uh, growing up a little bit more. The idea is go to 50,000 bottles, as if it's possible. Okay. Um, restarting to visit people, 
because we have a lot of friends around the world that we want to visit again okay. and we can't for till now so we watching to start now again uh, so that is the little things but uh, that uh, looking I, i'm looking oh, for that new, new that. seller is a big thing you sir is a big thing <laughs> yeah yeah is a, a when is something it going to be ready will, for the harvest I have to be has to be ready for the yeah. harvest yeah <laughs> no way I'm no. not if not I don't know where I have to have a harvest so <laughs> where are you going to put your grapes yeah 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 okay. so that is the, the idea uh, and after I don't know um, we have a little idea to change a little bit the, um, the packaging okay uh, maybe the label or maybe also to the packaging of uh, where go the wine we have a little bit of uh, studying about uh, wine in a can Okay. In Latina. Okay. We are, we just, uh, is a year that we're working with a society, with a company in Verona to make uh, one in a, in a can. Okay. But not the classic can, but easy top. So easy open it. Okay. So you can open and reopen uh, many times. Okay. But I already, a- I already have your marketing slogan. You ready for this? Now you ready? Take Maybe. it in the can. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? I think that's great. I think you're going to send a million cans of wine if you say yeah. take it in the can, which I'll explain to you what that means later. I, have, can, you, I, try, I think you know what I it can, means. I, I can understand, <laughs> I think. So that, that is the, the, it's a good thing that I want to... It's, canned wine is huge. Is it? It's huge. In, in the States, it's like, you know, it's instead massive. of bringing beer, you bring yeah. wine in a can. And this way you yeah. don't have bottles to break. You don't have... Yeah. Uh, uh, and also for us... that to lose. Yeah. Also for us, we are... We are in organic. We try to don't have a massive impact in everything okay. and have a, a, a can that is just aluminum. So you can squish easy it, to pull away, easy to recycle, is a recycle in infinity times. Uh, so the only problem is obviously in Italy, no one want to buy, I think, because we are so, so traditionalist. Traditionalist. Yeah. So the problem is for the house is uh, oh, another big thing I want to do hmm. in the future is a screw cap. For our wines. I, Good. I was just, if I may, the yes. little that I know, I was just thinking about screw caps because my dad, who loves wine, was asking me, is it corks, screw tops? And I said, well, apparently, which I learned from Wayne, a screw, ta- a screw cap doesn't actually make any difference to the quality of the wine. No, I, I don't know. It's, it's I, debatable. It depends. It depends. It's debatable. Well, is it not connected to snobbery? And this idea... Without a doubt. So that I, I, I read somewhere, or maybe it was a wine class that I went to, somewhere I, I heard that the screw, tap makes, the screw cap makes no difference to the wine. In, in some instances, it's probably better. It's if you're doing yeah. fresh wines, yeah. you know, you have less problems Definitely. with cork smell and things like yeah. that. Um, and oxidation. No corkage. No corkage. Yeah. Well, what do you mean no corkage? I mean, the wine t- <laughs> doesn't get corky. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because corkage is what you pay to something open a bottle else, of wine in a restaurant. Else yeah. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning. That's okay. <laughs> that's why you're here, Nat. Exactly. I'm here to learn. So that's uh, the, the, the idea. The, the screw cap in reality. Um, so canned wine. Canned wine and screw cap for us. And screw so cap. That's two for all the wines one. or just for uh, I, certain wines? I don't think I can do for Sasanta. Okay. Because uh, it's really a red wine that is uh, go in high price. I, I don't think that okay. people can understand it. But uh, I think, and I have a testing of red, great red wines aging in screw cap that are amazing. Okay. Because it's not real that uh, the screw cap don't change the wine for the eternity. But uh, if you have some membrane, so there is some uh, membranes. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the top, the filler on the top uh, can be have uh, um, uh, control C, um, control oxygen inside. So they can come inside with the control of the oxygen for a long time. Right. So when I was in uh, Livio Feluga, I testing white wines that have uh, like 20, uh, 15 years uh, in a screw cap with the control uh, oxygen inside coming inside that was amazing really better than a cork at the cork because the cork was like in five times one was good two was okay two rubbish okay screw cap was five to five same wow perfect yeah consistency yeah yeah so 
maybe the screw was not better than the top one of the cork, but was better than the other four. Wow. Okay. So if you have a big brand and you want to have a consistent, consti consistency, yeah. yes, uh, and you you you're working for that because uh, you you know your wine, you know what you're doing, you know what you want. Uh, I think is that the way to, to, to move. Cool. The problem is uh, the tradition. No one. Uh, Nobody wants to. No. Yeah. The, sommelier, the sommelier is just the big thing to change. Okay. They just are like a, a wool. So well, we're, normally, normally. So obviously. new new packaging, new ideas, but no new wines. No, I don't think so. No. It's too so much you're happy. Already. You're happy with what you have. Yeah, I have already too much. Okay. I think the idea is just cut something, but I don't know what cut. Yeah, I was gonna so. say, what would you cut if you had to cut something? If I want to cut something, I cut Sauvignon. Really? Yeah. Why? Because it's not what I really like. It's not your thing. No. Okay. If I have to, obviously I don't do because uh, it, it's important. we're working out for make uh, that idea of Sauvignon that we have, uh, so I can't cut it. Yeah. But uh, is the U.S. your biggest market? Uh, in the pandemic, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, in the normal world, no. Normal world is uh, was Italy. Italy. Yeah, fifty okay. percent Italy. Normally. Oh, okay, good. Normally, good, good. Uh, but in pandemic, no, it's just grown up. Okay, and um, and I'm really happy because the guy that uh, sell our wines in California is uh, is pushing us really big. Good. So Ryan uh, Zeman push us. What's the name no. of the... the uh, Zeman Global Selection. Zeman Global, Global Selection. Selection. So if you're in California, that's where to get that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you have a website, obviously. Yeah, but it's rubbish. Okay. So, so go before better. next time with Miss Bella. Okay, if, so better to follow you on Instagram. Instagram or Facebook, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you're pretty active on, on social media. Uh, Federica runs that. More no, than I do, or you do Instagram. Instagram, I do. Okay. Federica go to Facebook. Okay. I just we divide this one because uh, she. I'm I'm more in a vineyards and uh, more in a action on in the cellar than her. So it's just easier for me to take a picture, okay. and do maybe in the night uh, or in the evening the the post, uh, then send her and uh, do a post after. So it's just uh, you have five minutes. You do the post and, and that's it. Go. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So the. Facebook is more uh, chilling because you don't you have to a big message to big message to script to write and mm -hmm. everything. Instagram is just more quicker and Quick, yeah. easier. Bang, so, bang, bang. Yeah. yeah, so they take a picture and just send it. Cool, that's the idea. Good. Well, then everybody just follow. A go, go, Rick. <laughs> uh, I, I would like to know something about uh, the uh, your Friulano. Okay. In what sense? Uh, I, I think uh, uh, don't I, I don't think it's quite I'm, I'm quite sure that not uh, every year but you have not a constant uh, of a flavor in your Friulano. Every I think uh, that every year that I try uh, uh, the new the new season how do you say vintage the new productions yeah. is. Uh, not a little, but uh, just more than a little different from the previous year. Are you uh, what? Uh, is your idea of making Friulano or is normal to have such a difference? Uh, hey, everybody. Hi, Matthias. I'll bring you up to have, ask your question in just a minute. So hang on. Let them, let them, uh, Moreno answer Ricardo's question. And if you have a question, I'll bring you up. Um, so, um, um, what I can say, uh, in reality, uh, in the last three years, three vintages, we try to have a, a constant production and a constant way to make a Friulano, and we change a little bit with what we do in the past. So if you're thinking about 2017, I, and before I tell you that is true, and because we try to find a way to sell it, that is the, uh, the reality. Because Friulano is not a best seller and a best selling. So it's uh, hard to sell around the world normally and around Italy. So we try to find a way to, a, a way to the, that the people try, try to like it and try to uh, buy more. That's the idea. 
from 2008, uh, 8, 19, 18, 19, and now the 20 that's coming out, uh, I think uh, we find what we want and we just uh, don't think to sell it. That's the idea is not sell it. The idea is make what we want. Because I think uh, for year, for some years, we just lost uh, the way and we just have uh, one or two steps back and we restart to do what we like. So now in the last two years, I think you can find uh, the same Fil Rouge in the wine. Uh, before, no, and I agree with you. Uh, but uh, we have, uh, we try to push in harder to go in a way that we don't like it in the end. So we just uh, go back. That's the idea. Um, and we go back uh, also with um, more uh, aging on the leaves. So before we go out in March, now we go out in September with the wine. Oh, okay. And uh, with more uh, batonnage. That's the yeah. idea. And only concrete tank, so only vat tank. Uh, before we using a little bit of part in wood, uh, some uh, stainless steel. So we just uh, really go back to what we, my dad do or what we do 10 years or 15 years ago. Cool. So yeah, okay. I can uh, understand the uh, problems <laughs> about uh, that wine. No, 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 no. It was not uh, uh, a problem for me. I, I would like, uh, uh, I wanted to understand uh, your idea of uh, making Fulano. No, no, no. But because uh, you know, I, I really appreciate the uh, the previous version of Fulano. No, the no, new no. version, I, 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 I still have to try. Okay, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's just the explanation is that we try to, uh, to make a, like a easy wine to sell it or drink it, obviously. And uh, but doesn't work, uh, so we just have uh, we go back. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Cool. All right. Well, we we're gone over an hour and fifteen minutes, so I think maybe okay. we can wrap it up. I want to thank everybody who came and sat through everything. Luciana, Ricardo, Christopher. I know you came in a little bit later, so thank you, Eleanor. I know you've been in and out, so thank you for coming in and listening. Uh, big special thanks to Moreno for being the first guest. Um, I will be publishing the podcast sometime in the future. I think I'll pro probably put a couple of um, episodes in the bank before I start publishing them. But um, thank you, Moreno, for spending your time with here and bringing us some a delicious wine. Thank you, Natalie, for um, coming and all of your your wonderful questions and your and your awesome voice. Um, you're going to be my sidekick for sure. Yeah. Um, thank you, Robbie, for helping out and, and doing all the technical stuff. Um, I couldn't do it without you and your taverna. So the taverna is Robbie. So we'll be hearing more from him in the future. But anyway, thank you, everybody, for coming. And to let you all go home, go to uh, eat your dinners or whatever you need to do. Thank you for spending some time with us. Thank you to everybody for listening. And uh, have a great night. Everybody. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Hey, I want to thank everybody this evening for coming. Thank you for listening. I appreciate uh, Natalie Benlolo, our co-host, Rob Milani, our sound guy. Follow me on La Taverna Friuli on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram at Wayne McGreat. And you can find this awesome music on YouTube at Beat Ambassador. Finishes with an A. Thank you.